All right, we have some very interesting Prodigy drama in a way that I did not expect to ever see it. And it's actually nothing to do with the pros besides one particular pro who is actually commenting on Reddit, which you know is gonna be juicy. With that, let's get into the Prodigy drama. All right, so right off the bat, I will admit I do have a, I don't wanna say bias, but I am very susceptible to anything that's anti-Prodigy because again, they did file a lawsuit against a child. They did actually win the lawsuit and it was kind of in their power to do the lawsuit, but still the press around suing a child is just not great. And amongst other things, Prodigy has just been on the kind of decline, I would say, at least for public persona. If you're actually throwing their plastic, it's pretty mid, but it's mid in a way that I don't think you'll hate it. You just probably won't like love it when compared to the rest of the disc golf market because I really don't feel like they're elevating their plastic in a way that everyone else is. So with that said, if you think about Prodigy, there's only a couple of names. We have obviously Ezra and Isaac Robinson, kind of that GOAT status last year for Isaac, but since then not really too much movement. Um, actually, Ezra's is doing a lot better. But again, this is not about the pros. This is actually about the AM side for a set of tournaments in Georgia called the Prodigy Star Series. <laughs> I just wonder why they make these names because like uh, you think star there's like the star team from Innova. There's obviously like star plastic from Innova. <laughs> so I don't know how they came to that nomenclature, but not important. The thing that is important is this Redditor who has his receipts like nobody else on the entire disc golf scene. <laughs> We're very, very hyped about that. And I do literally mean the disc golf scene. He is referencing all these posts from a tournament director, and I'm for sure gonna butcher this, but the event and project manager, Matt Zolowitz, claiming that Matt scammed amateur players and then tried to censor and bribe to cover this up which I mean, that is the most salacious title you could ever imagine in the disc golf world. So, you know, I'm hooked. I actually saw this like maybe one hour after it was posted. I actually kind of forgot about it. But what was very interesting is that there are so many details in here and it actually references Will Schustrick. We obviously know Will as one of the best disc golfers in the older era, but he actually does have part ownership of Prodigy. So that comes into play later on in this video. But as far as Matt goes, this is where it gets very, very interesting. So according to this Redditor, which he actually has stated, did confuse a couple of the facts of the tournament and the rules that were required, um, but that's not super important. I just want to mention that because it is somewhat relevant later on. But with that said, this is the fourth event in the Star Series. And according to this Redditor, the first three was 40% payout for all AMs. And so you and me and everybody else would assume the fourth one would also include 40% AM payout. And not only would you assume that, but that was actually in the disc golf scene description, 40% payout, allegedly, allegedly. I don't know if this is fact <laughs> because it has changed. But according to this Redditor, the final day of the tournament without notifying anyone, the entire AM payout was dropped. And I assume this is a Redditor, but he calls out the tournament director, <laughs> stating, when will AM payouts be emailed to us? And then Matt states, this is only a player's pack and trophy only event. The first three events had big payouts, which of course is replied by the page said 40% payout to AMs and that AMs will receive Prodigy credit until it was recently removed after play ended. Just seems misleading along with the fact that there's been an AM payout every Star Series finale just seemed weird that it got taken out. And of course, at least in my interpretation, taking zero responsibility of that notion, he just says, thanks for your constructive criticism. We appreciate you. Which of course means he doesn't appreciate you. Just petty uh, management speak. And then later there was another comment stating, is there still an AM payout? It was listed under the pro payout, uh, but it isn't there anymore. Very similar to what happened to the finale at the Fletcher last year, uh, which is very interesting. States a trend. Uh, and Matt says, yes, AMs top 25% per division, <laughs> which is responded by 40% uh, is what was originally listed and is the usual percentage for these tournaments. And this is where it just gets nice and spicy. I, I love a passive aggressive response. Then we got one here. Uh, Travis, there does not have to be any payout at all. Between player packs, PDGA fees, course fees, we did not have to do any payout. We are doing it because this is a great series and people enjoy it. The sponsorship covers pro field and the four free, free CTPs. I suggest you look at the tournament manager finances if you run an event and understand a bit more, which is very petty, very petty. It feels like we're on Facebook right now. Very uh, <laughs> interesting times. Travis responds, true, there is no requirement for an AM payout and many tournaments don't include them, but to post 40% payout and then remove it completely without any comment as happened last year with the finale or to show a 40% payout on the tournament page and then reduce it to 25% without notification after over 100 players have paid their entry fees is a is sketchy. I would even say scummy to operate a disc golf series. You have run a lot of good tournaments in this area and I expected better. <laughs> Just dropping bombs there, Travis. Love it. And so we get to a follow up here. And then three weeks ago, this Redditor posts about this entire ordeal about his dishonest approach to player payouts in the comment section of the following tournament. <laughs> and of course, it was all wiped. 
And then he goes on to state that he contacted Disc Golf Scene to be like, hey, what's up here? And then just the legendary Bruce McDonald stating, uh, can you drop me down to MA60? The way I'm playing these days, even a division of one, including myself only, might lose. <laughs> legendary that he was dropping that in the comments. But of course, Matt didn't really appreciate that post and uh, sent a voicemail. Allegedly, he admits that he was wrong, apologizes, and offers a Prodigy gift card. <laughs> only the worst of the worst would give a Prodigy gift card as honestly a bribe. Like, I don't know how you don't see it as a bribe because uh, he asked, can you take that post down? I don't really appreciate it. And goes on to state one party consent states, which is just very funny to go legal on this because it obviously shows that he was in the wrong. He knew he was in the wrong, but when he actually got called out about it, it was like, whoa, 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 one party consent states. I don't consent to that. And again, I'm speaking from a very real bias of kind of anti-prodigy, really not loving the management style and just kind of the way that they uh, treat players and fans just doesn't feel like a great trend for the company and just overall market and PR. And it honestly sounds like a very honest take. Like, I I'm sorry if I offended you. I'm sorry if I had tried to scam and like it, it got caught that I was trying to scam and I've done it multiple times in the past, allegedly. And again, you just know that the overall thought was, can it just please not be a thought in my mind? I just want to be done with it. Uh, but nope, we are not done with it because I'm talking about it. <laughs> and before we go on, I want to say, if you are a tournament director, you're honestly doing so much great service for the disc golf community. We are grateful to have you do it for literally zero profit. There are no profit motives. If anything, you're getting kind of screwed by the amount of work they have to do for players packs. And I cannot reiterate enough that tournament directors do so much goodwill that never gets repaid. And it's just out of the goodness of their hearts to make a great event. And I want to reiterate that I am not against tournament directors. I'm against people that are dishonest about their event and then change it later on. That is my problem with the situation and it has nothing to do with any tournament director elsewhere. And then there's some boring stuff about what is required for an amateur tournament that I don't really want to get into because it's just boring. <laughs> but we continue because it does not stop there. So here's where Will comes in, being the white knight for Prodigy, uh, which <laughs> I just love. Like Will, th this guy that was like one of the best disc golfers of all time is piping in on this. I would not have expected it, but here we are. Uh, kind of defending Matt, which is obviously going to happen because he is a part owner of Prodigy and, and obviously has some part to do with Matt being a member of Prodigy. So, so there's some bias there. But he was on to state uh, Matt and Prodigy provide an excellent value, stating how the amateur purse prizes and player packs exceed 85%, showing how Matt goes above and beyond, and states Matt and Prodigy provide an excellent value to the players of North Georgia. If you do not agree or are not interested in the event, you don't have to play. I would suggest hosting one yourself so you can find out all the intricacies for hosting an event that includes finances and making sure 100 plus people have a great time. And then who I assume to be the Redditor, Travis Thompson, states, clarify this with the PDGA event support staff. My interpretation of the 45% rule was incorrect. I apologize. And then once again, Prodigy or Will tried to erase the entire discussion stating, uh, can you go back and all your Reddit posts, social comments, phone calls, emails to let everyone know you're incorrect? You sort of blew Matt and the tournament series up for not understanding what you were talking about. And it's just so funny. Matt says, I appreciate you, Will. So with that, we go on. So with that, the Redditor reports all these events to the PGA and states that they have not taken any action. And before we get to more of Will's comments, which is very intriguing and very telling, there is that one additional piece of information that really puts the nail in the coffin. That's because Matt was a former gymnast teacher who was put on a list of suspended and restricted persons of US gymnasts due to allegations of sexual misconduct, which I mean, that's crazy. That is crazy that you have this last piece of information that really showcases who this person might be. We certainly don't know his true character, but having that additional piece of information just feels like it might be a telltale sign that this person is manipulative or at least very argumentative. So with that, let's get into the comments by your boy, Will. And my, my, does it just get deeper and deeper the further you go down on this? So before we even get into any of this, let's just give Will some positive vibes. He did an AMA that was really, really good five months ago. So if you want to see Will as a positive figure, go to the AMA, good vibes all around. But of course, with one exception, he had to state our baskets are very good. I don't think anyone believes that. I think even Prodigy players have literally said on coverage, these baskets suck, but I digress. Let's get into everything else that was said in this thread. And remember, this is a thread that did not need to be talked about. Will did not need to pipe up. And I know Reddit is a cesspool of hate. Obviously everyone knows that. And this is like a 50 V one situation. So there was no winning, but man did Will not win with basically every post getting downvoted to heck. But let's just go into the highlights, starting with his one and only standalone comment. Hey, Travis, it seems like you want to be heard any one name you can come across which is great grammar, goes on to state how he misunderstood the payouts, which is fair, he did. 
good. You have called our office, wrote in messages under fake emails, complained to the PDGA, and I'm sure there's even more to it. Oh boy. What is it you're trying to gain with all your recordings and evidence? Are you looking for us to stop hosting local events? I would suggest hosting an event yourself so you can understand the amount of work, effort, and the amount of financial management it takes to make 100 plus people happy. And if you do not like the events we host, you are not forced to play. Outside of your continued effort of bashing Matt, Prodigy, and myself, players in our events have given great feedback and we strive to serve the disc golf community by hosting professional level local events. And then it gets even worse regarding the sexual misconduct, stating again a classic attack on someone when no facts are known. The term sexual misconduct is referring to an argument he had with a former coach. The coach was high up and filed it under sexual misconduct. There would be police reports and his name on sexual offender lists. He is not on any list and has no criminal background. And then just continues by saying one upset competitor looking to be heard and claiming there was a scam behind the scenes of a disc golf event when the individual does not understand how tournaments work. No, God, please, no, 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 no. My goodness, that could not have been handled worse, Will. I think that is hands down the worst <laughs> response we've ever seen from Prodigy. So, uh, Good on you for that one. All right, so we have a lot of a lot of points to bring up here. So the notion that the sexual misconduct was just totally a non-issue, obviously we don't know the facts, that's a given. But the fact still stands that there is this weird sexual misconduct at the USA Gymnastics. So, I mean, I don't know about you. I don't know anyone that has that. I don't know anyone that is barred from the gymnastics. I don't know any context, but I can certainly say that being on that list is not great when there's only like 14 people on that list. And while it could be just simply an argument of someone higher up, it builds a set of evidence as to who this guy's character truly is. So I'm just gonna say, whenever you tone that down, it does not look good. It may be a totally non-issue, but as someone on the outside looking in, it doesn't look great. And then of course the disc golf. So much was said from Will about how like, if you don't like it, go somewhere else we don't force you to do this well clearly not understanding the issue the issue is that there was an entire bait and switch allegedly i don't know for sure but allegedly on this fourth star series event where a certain set of payout was promised and then it was actually totally dropped so if that is true that is the main problem we have with this whole situation nothing in this entire response from will even touches that it just says if you hate us if you want to bash matt if you want to do all this bad stuff to us like go somewhere else we're not we're not the bad guys here he didn't list the one issue that everyone has with this whole situation and yes matt did say i'm sorry my bad i i got caught it's kind of unfortunate but for will to bash Matt so strongly and not bring up the fact that he was in the wrong. Matt definitely did something shady. I don't approve of it. And we'll make sure that does not happen in the future, but that was not done. That was not done. And we are definitely not done with Will's replies. So let's uh, keep on moving. And then to add to that, other people that have played Prodigy tournaments have stated they also have stopped playing in these tournaments with people stating, there are several disc golfers that I know that no longer play in Prodigy tournaments because of how you guys run them. <laughs> Quit making yourself sound like a hero. Shady TDs running tournaments poorly is having the opposite effect. I've played in a lot of Prodigy tournaments over the past three years and can honestly tell you that they've gotten worse and worse. Tournaments don't have to be so difficult if you run them up front and honest about the details from day one. Promising one payout and then pulling the rug out, changing it on the day of the tournament is what they call a bait and switch. Your responses to this post and others have truly disappointed me, which I, I just 100% agree to that. And then another post, Will states, this person is on a smear campaign and he's been personally called to apologize for any miscommunication and was asked to remove his comments because because they are a bit drastic. He's clearly not willing to accept the apology. Brother, ugh. Oh boy, oh boy. This is almost office levels of like horrible responses. You don't get Michael Scott saying shit like this. This is just gold. All right, so, all right, so let's break down why that was a bad response. So yes, this person bringing up these Reddit posts obviously has some motive behind it to state, hey, these are bad trends. I don't want to see these trends continue in the industry. It really does not set a good precedent. So to say it is simply a smear campaign and that Matt already apologized and asked to take the comments down, it just really feels like there is no level of accountability here. And then this guy just says uh, what everyone's thinking. Yikes, this is not the way to address this. <laughs> and I love how everyone's banding together on this one. So if you remember the meme that was included in the uh, Prodigy lawsuit, so the rocks, I think it's how you say it name. He has screenshots of this whole post in case Will does decide to delete some comments, which feels legendary. Love to see that we're getting some accountability here. And it really does feel like the whole disc golf community is coming together to really just show how much we dislike the management of Prodigy. It's obvious that there are so many things that have been done wrong in the past couple of years. And yes, the baskets and discs are not the best, but that is almost way lower on the totem pole than all the other stuff. And then we have another person pointed out, you're a legend in this sport and you're making fun of an MA4 player. Not the greatest look. And then he goes on to state that the amateur pay 
layouts was incorrect, which again was not the point. And someone else said, no, that's not the main issue here. The main complaint was the bait and switch or payout was 40%, but changed to 25% after people had registered. And then Will states he didn't even get top 45%. So what difference would it have made? Which again, just clearly misses the point. And then Will replied to another commenter stating, don't know who you are, but I would bet we have never met. Maybe one day we'll throw this and we can talk it over. Definitely has like a weird tone to it. And other people had similar thoughts by stating with a very solid reply, no one wants to throw this with you, dude. You are a grade one douche. And there's a reason that Prodigy is the laughing stock of the disc golf world. And then he goes on to state that he's actually avoided Prodigy tournaments in Minneapolis as well, which I think adds a lot of validity to this whole argument that Prodigy tournaments just are not on par with everything else. Throughout the entire post, you can hear people obviously complain about baskets and plastic, which is obviously a major issue. But I think there are so many fewer people that actually know how these Prodigy tournaments are ran. And so to see people all over the US have this similar feeling that Prodigy tournaments just are not on par with everything else, it creates a much more tangible notion that maybe it is just the structure of these tournaments that make it very hard for TDs to run it well and to run it smoothly like an MVP or Discraft or any of a tournament. And maybe that's due to Prodigy making it very difficult to buy from or have any ton of requirements. I don't know. But throughout this entire post, there are so many people that have said they have stopped going to Prodigy tournaments because they are so poorly ran, which I think is way more problematic than one TD trying to change and payouts because that is just a one-off, which actually has been stated he's done this multiple times in the past, allegedly, allegedly. But if there's an overall feeling that for whatever reason, these Prodigy tournaments are poorly ran, it just creates a lot of mistrust for an already very mistrusting company. A lot of people have decided they will never buy Prodigy again. And that is not something I've heard from anybody else. No other brands have people totally boycott it. That is just Prodigy. No one else is doing that. And I feel so happy in kind of a weird way that everyone is banding together to truly show where the corruption is happening. And whether that's players packs being way overvalued, making it incredibly difficult to run a Prodigy tournament, which might have been what led to this whole ordeal where Matt had to change the payout structure, or maybe they just simply don't have a standard practice for every single tournament. It is hard to speculate for sure, but whatever the reason is, people around the entire US have had similar feelings about these specific Prodigy tournaments that do not pan out well. And I really want to reiterate, but there are so many good TDs out there that do so many great things for the disc golf world that no one sees and no one will ever see or know. And I just want to say a massive thank you to all of you. But with that said, it is incredibly important that we point out these TDs that are doing shady things. Now this ultimately probably didn't amount to that much money, but this is just one TD at one tournament. There are almost certainly other TDs that are pocketing a lot of the M payouts because no one really ever checks. And I'm not sure who would truly bear the responsibility. I mean, I guess it has to be the PDGA, but developing a standard protocol is imperative to making sure this stuff does not happen. Because while the poster did report this to the PDGA, they're probably not going to do much. So having a standard built-in protocol to make sure this does not happen feels incredibly important right now. But with that, I'm sure we're getting so much in the weeds here. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any positive or negative experiences with Prodigy tournaments, let me know. And be sure to subscribe for more quality disc golf content. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know this is a long and very different video than what I normally make, but I hope you enjoyed it. So with that, Wild Runs, signing out. Peace.